Hi, I'm Belinda Carley, the Director of the Institute of Personal Care Science, and I often get asked questions about cosmetic regulations, or sometimes I hear or misread on the internet people saying that the cosmetics industry is not regulated. So I thought it's about time I gave you a video about cosmetic regulations. Now this is not uh, a 10 minute video topic. This is a full subject, not just a full subject, it can be a full certificate program. But in this video today, I'm gonna to talk you through some of the overarching principles to prove that the cosmetics industry is definitely regulated. There's also some overarching principles to help ensure product safety and truth and fairness in product labeling and communications, and to also give you a little bit of insight as to how we search different regulatory databases. First, there's this overarching principle of truth in advertising and the need for product safety from various organizations around the world. The first we'll look at is this concept of truth in advertising. Now this applies to every type of product that is sold in these markets and these are the agencies that are generally overseen by government organizations to help ensure that consumers are provided truth and honesty in advertising communications. There's also an overarching principle that products must be safe when used as directed. Again, the organizations listed here aren't specific to the personal care industry. They are the overarching regulators that help ensure product safety in general of every product put into the marketplace. Now, let's look specifically at the regulators that oversee the cosmetics industry. Now I've listed out here for you the relevant government organizations that oversee cosmetic ingredient compliance. This is to do with the safe inputs and limits that apply to cosmetic ingredients in different parts of the world. As you can see, there are several regulatory agencies that oversee inputs into cosmetics. So this concept of the cosmetics industry not being regulated is really quite ridiculous. It's very heavily regulated, not only by the overarching agencies that ensure truth in communications and labeling and overarching principles of product safety, but they are also regulated by inputs, specifically by these organizations that set limits of safe use of ingredients and also prohibit a few thousand ingredients that aren't allowed in cosmetic products for various reasons. Now, another thing that's really important for me to explain to you is that cosmetics are regulated differently around the world. So depending on where you are in the world, the products you want to find out regulations for may or may not be considered a cosmetic product. They may be a quasi drug in some regions. They may be a drug in others. They may be considered a special use cosmetic and regulated differently in China. So it really depends on where are you selling the product, where are you promoting the product, and that will also determine some ingredient restrictions and prohibitions. Now let me just show you a few of these regulator sites so you can see there are a lot of regulations over what we use and specifically don't use in personal care products. Let's start with Health Canada's hot list. Now they have a prohibited list here we go, here's some examples. And they also have a restricted list and the conditions over which they're restricted. Here is a big list of the Chinese prohibited and restricted ingredient lists. You can see there's loads of materials here that are listed with their relevant restrictions and input rates. Here is the Japanese standard for cosmetics. They have annexes that specifically list prohibited and restricted ingredients and the amounts that they're restricted to. There's also limits for materials in Korea. There's also banned ingredients in Korea. There is the US FDA site that specifically oversees cosmetic products and ingredients that can be used and those that are prohibited and some extra information about the use of other ingredients. 
And then there's my personal favorite, COSING, the EU Commission site. Now this is by far the best and easiest database to search for cosmetic restrictions. We can have a look at their annexes, which specifically provide different annexes, whether they're prohibited, restricted, colorants that are allowed, preservatives that are allowed, UV filters that are allowed. They also very specifically list out by inky name, chemical name, CAS number, very specific searches here, limits and conditions of use that may apply. And they've also got some great details on all the materials that you might want to question, including SCCS opinions that help clarify what they believe to be the truth about the safety and use of certain cosmetic ingredients. So as you can see, the cosmetics industry is very definitely regulated. There's some overarching principles you need to comply with with any type of product you bring onto the market. And there's some very specific regulators that oversee the prohibitions and limits to ensure safe use of cosmetic ingredients and personal care products. The next thing I often get asked by people is, well, they're just kind of guidelines, aren't they? And I think that's also laughable because no, these are regulations. If you don't comply, you face a product recall. It's just like when you're driving, if you're speeding, if there's no police around, you'll get away with it. But if they're there, you'll get caught, you'll get a fine. And in the personal care industry, if you're using a prohibited ingredient, it's instant product recall. If you're using a restricted ingredient above its restricted limits, it's also a product recall. The overarching principles of all cosmetic and personal care products is they must be safe when used as directed. There's the overarching principles to protect consumer safety and their purchasing. And then there's the specific regulators that provide very specific limits to ensure safe use by consumers. You've probably seen my other videos where I talk about cosmetic ingredient safety and provide you links to information where you can find out the limits and further research. And that is provided by these regulatory agencies to help inform consumers and let them know that when they're using cosmetic products, they can use them with confidence, knowing that the ingredients present are safe when the product is used as directed. Well, this is a short introduction, just like I said, it's not something I can teach you properly in 10 minutes, but you can study with us if cosmetic compliance is something you need to be responsible for. I hope you enjoyed this video and have definitely seen the cosmetics industry is very well regulated to ensure safe use by consumers. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please leave any questions or comments below. If you'd like links to these sites and to learn it properly, please contact us. That is one of the things we do here is teach people how to use these regulations properly. Make sure you subscribe to receive notifications about all our videos. I look forward to seeing you back in the lab soon. Happy formulating.